This is the Weaving the World Ops call for Wednesday, January 26th, 2022. Um, although we're talking about Victory's brain for a little bit. And Wendy, your comments in the plan were fabulous. And I'm actually sort of stuck on trying to get through a couple of them to simplify things. And the one I just brought up is pricing. And I'll just bring up <clears throat> the screen that I had created for pricing. And the idea that I had was, um, Let's do differential. And this thousand dollars is a marker from way back when, when I first put this page up. I think I've been talked off the, I've been talked well off the thousand dollar price point. But the question is, what, what is the right price point? Um, but I was trying to make a point that if you want to work openly and we can post this call openly, there's a steep discount. Like it goes down to, uh, to to something uh, like a hundred bucks. Uh, but if you want privacy, then it's like a thousand bucks. And then there's kind of a matrix, which basically says, you know, if you want in person and private, that's a, that's a talk, you know, talk to my, uh, to my speaking agency and we can set something up or I can do a workshop for you. But this is just, uh, and this could be presented as a, as a two by two. Um, but there's kind of no reason to get this, this complicated at this point. Uh, and I think simpler is better and I should just have a price and then offer discounts individually. And the question then is, what is the price, a uh, reasonable price? And, and, the, and what I thought was, so here I say 60 minutes, some prep on my part, a 60 minute Zoom, and then I do a five minute video summary, which I send people afterward. And that's the work product, that's the deliverable. Um, I'm also thinking that 90 minute Zoom might be better because 90 minutes seems to be my collaboration and thinking unit of time. I'm just thinking in terms of, I'm mostly thinking in terms of for many calls at about 45 minutes, we start to actually sort of click and hum and get into things. And at the 60 minute mark, things are kind of great. And then at 90 minutes, we're starting to lose energy and peter out and it's a good time to wrap. Um, so if I make things 60 minutes, it's too short. But if I make it 90 minutes, then the price has to go up some because it's a little more time, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm trying to value price, not price against like doctor's time or lawyer's time, although I know that that's exactly the comparison that winds up being, you know, happening here. So all thoughts welcome. Who's your audience was going to be my question. Um, I'm interested in anybody who wants to amplify their ideas, anybody who wants to, I mean, the, the, the concept of Pictory's brain is you've got an idea and you, if, and, and you're open to, if, if I may, instead of, please. um, uh instead of generic audience how about specific personas <laughs> um in which case i'd go back to my um uh what's it called value uh canvas um where i basically created like seven different personas it wasn't specifically for pictures brain but it was really close by um so let's go let me just find that and bring it back up or, yeah, or even maybe um, a way to get at this even faster is who are the 10 people you would reach out to first or who are the, right, what, what are the bucket of people um, because their mindset based on price, like what they'd be coming to you for would, would very much determine what, what sort of price point they're willing to toler tolerate in their mind, you know, mm -hmm. um, if they're coming to you for something business, they can, the price can go much higher. Than if somebody's just like, oh, I feel like playing around with this for my personal, you know. Oh, well, for different. sure, for sure. No, and I'm aiming, I'm aiming for business audiences who have budget and who are working with pretty big ideas. I'm aiming for people who got a startup idea concept they want to perfect, an internal corporate project that they want to run. And I've seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of such things. So, so very comfortable in that space, um, and not. I mean, I'm interested in, but, but and would do as favor or a deep discount personal brainstormy sort of things that'd be great um but that's not the intended market here at all uh pete you were going to say something well i i, I kind of um second wendy's thing you know um uh like a name and a you know name and characteristics um even if they're made up i think the other thing underneath that is what's your cost or you know what are you willing to work for and what are you not willing to work for sure mm -hmm. Um, so my cost, I'm, I'm trying to keep the work product as thin as possible because I know that if I have a stack of reports to write, they won't get written easily or well or quickly. But if I have a, uh, if I can, if, if we record the call, I'm, fi I'm totally fine uh, improv live uh, extemporaneously on my feet generating stuff. And then I know that I will like turn for a little bit and come up with a couple other things to say, which I've been doing in the story threading. 
Um, so I know that I will have enough meat to give them a five to 10 minute video. I'll, I'll say it'll be a five minute video. It'll be a 10 minute video uh, of commentary that goes through stuff. And, th and then probably a list of bookmarks into my brain and into the world uh, that'll also come with that. That work product is easy for me to generate all by myself. So every, every, um, what I'm trying to do is-, is what's, So what, <clears throat> um, yeah. what's the minimum you would charge a business for that? I've been doing that for free for years, so zero. Um, okay, that's um, but I'm trying brilliant. to make, but I'm trying to make, but I'm, wrong answer. <laughs> but that's the right answer. You, that's a totally unsustainable. So business model. It, it sounds like ninety minutes of of uh, work time or something like that. It's and sort of know. like yeah. It's sort of like uh, well, it's more than ninety or two minutes. hours. If I make it a ninety minute, if I make it a ninety minute call, which is my temptation, although that eats a lot more of my time as well. Uh, then there's prep time, which is at least a half hour, maybe an hour. Uh, then there's then there's recording and producing and sending them the video afterward, which is at least a half hour. So we're talking sort of two and a half three hours. to three hour. We're talking like a three hour stretch of my time for each call. So, uh, so the way that's structured, I, I think you've got essentially fixed fixed cost and then variable cost for duration, right? Um, so a ninety minute call is is cheaper for you, or you know, cheaper per minute than a sixty minute call. And a two hour call is even cheaper still. Because yeah, the, the fixed costs apply for each call. Um, um, so so how, what's so we we got to three hours basically for a one hour call? For a 90 minute call, yeah. If it's an um, hour call, then, it probably cuts back. It gets closer to two hours, but probably not done in two hours. And Mark and Michael were talking about Pick Jury's brain. I'm trying to figure out a pricing plan um, and, that make that is simpler than what I've got on the website right now. And then what's your hourly rate? My, well, my mid-range one is $100. Yeah. Um, I don't generally do a lot of stuff for hours. I do speeches for a fee. I do days. Uh, and I've done days for like $2,000 a day, which you can divide back. So you've got uh, an hourly product here. Yeah. I, I know exactly. So I'm heading right into our land. So hey, you I, said $2,000 a day? Yeah. Divided by six or eight or so? Eight. Um, that's, uh, what is that? Uh, 250? 250. Yeah. Yeah, something like 250. Um, so does 250 an hour sound like a reasonable? Um, part of it is what will people, what will people even pay for when they don't know what this is. So mm, um, that's a really bad answer. It's a, yeah, that's <laughs> it, true. Um, at, at least that's not where to start, right? Yeah. Where, where to start is, I think Pete's, ex I would agree with Pete's angle on this, right? Start with what you know you've already been charging basically for your time and and, and, you and may also have... the, a minimum like floor like if right. i'm getting paid 25 bucks an hour i can't do it right i'd rather do it for free and say it's a gift you know right <laughs> um yes so you know you know when you're so it's not what the market will bear I, like you, you have a cost basis, basically, you know, you, that you should think of it that way. And if it's $250 an hour, it's $250 an hour. And if you can't sell any of that, then that means that the market won't bear your, your product, right? There's no or demand the, for the product. The marketing needs to be improved. Right. <laughs> or, you, or you need, yeah. Yeah, right. Like we're not, you know, it's not being presented in a way that people understand the value of what they're getting. Yeah. Even better. It's a, a really good way to put it. Yeah. And that's why, go ahead. I was just going to add that um, I could imagine. I mean, there's there's one thing if if let's say two fifty an hour is, you know, what you've gotten and what um, you would like to get, but you haven't proven yourself in the market with this product. Um, valuing it to it, at two fifty and then offering like a free first session or, you know, a half price something. Or, or money back guarantee or. Or discount. Yeah, yeah. Some, something that doesn't, doesn't get rid of that, that stated value. And in fact, capitalize if somebody says, oh, you're giving me $250 worth of something, I'll try that. You know, it's, it's, it's putting your, it's putting, it's betting on yourself. I like yeah. I like the idea a lot of, of picking a a, a a picking a valuable price if I can say that and then offering discounts to start and say hey I'm doing fifty percent off for you 
or or whatever. And, and you shouldn't do that unless you really need to. And yeah. you should count those mm -hmm. that, that discount as marketing cost. And yeah. every discount you give pisses off your CFO a lot. Like a lot, a lot. Like, okay, so <laughs> I just spent, you know, great, you had four sessions this week. You know, I just spent my CF, you know, as a CFO, I just spent 1200 bucks and you're telling me you came back with 400. What the, you know, so you have to be really careful with that in startup mode, right? <clears throat> if the CFO has got a bunch of stuff in the bank and she wants to spend, you know, a bunch on marketing, she's like, give it all away this week. I'm totally happy with that. Right, right. Or freemium models do exactly that, but, but I, you know, shouldn't do that. Premium is about for, scale, not about, right. And for those of us who are doing work that would do it anyway, whether we were getting paid or not, one mental exercise that I like to play with myself is imagine this totally takes over your life. And the first thought about and feeling about that is, oh, great, because I love doing this. Okay. So expand this out and say, it's now taking time away from your family, or it's now taking time away from other projects that have popped up along the way that all of a sudden are exciting and you want to do them. And you have to do this instead because you made commitments to people, right? All of a sudden that feels unsustainable too. And it are those moments where like, but I'm getting paid, right? Like, like this, but this, you know, and those are the moments that even when it's work that we love doing to me, it's, it, it's the motivate, it's the extra motivator to do all the stuff we don't really like doing related to the business right. that, um, that um, keeps us going. Um, this is not one of those, you're going to offer 10. And then if it goes, you know, you're going to start really making this into something that that's a, that's a backbone for you for the long term. Yeah. then it needs to be sustainable on all levels, including when it gets annoying. I and love that's that where the money comes in, right? So right. that's another piece of this. That's not just about the dollars on the bottom line, although that's also important. It's also about how it feels when it gets sticky and, you know, when you hit roadblocks and when you, right, it become, it's still motivating. So that's for you to kind of feel into, right? Like there's, there's, it helps me figure out the floor. Like, yeah, if it, if it, if I hit the not fun parts, I, I'm not going to do it for less than this. Right. And then this would, and then where it feels like gravy too, like, I can't believe I'm getting paid. <laughs> this much to do something that I love that's exactly. there's a sweet spot in there and that's what you're shooting for and if you've already been charging I think it makes sense to to go I mean we're kind of leaning if it's 250 then you're leaning towards 750 I think for what you're offering that 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 vibe makes sense to me I don't know how mm -hmm. they feel but mm -hmm. I think, I think that's I need along to the right lines I think I also need to explain that the work before and after and so forth that is that it isn't one hour's work in which case people do the mental math of I don't pay my psychiatrist seven fifty an hour. Why would I do this? Um, so I, I can do that. Hank, go ahead. Yeah, I think I told you about this uh, in early conversation, but for the benefit of the others and building on what uh, Wendy was just saying, uh, I'm doing almost all of my work now pro bono of my own initiatives. So I was invited to, uh, to make a visioning project for Wales. Uh, by the OECD, and I thought, well, that's pretty good. I love to do a visioning project for Wales. I used to live there for two years, and I, Wales is, is similar to Ireland, where I have my second house. But yeah, just as Wendy, you were saying, yeah, but commitments and deadlines and meetings and meetings and deadlines, and do I really want to do this? So I put a really high price on it, and they accepted the high price. <laughs> So, well, I'm doing it now and I, and I, well, we're just starting it off. So it's enjoyable enough, but because I said to myself, well, if they really want me to do it, I'll earn this amount of money and it'll help pay for lots of long vacations uh, or whatever. That, that was an important thing. So I, I just thought that's a practical example of, of what Wendy was just saying. Makes great sense. I, I wanted to add to the cost thing. Um, uh, when I'm doing engineering projects, I cost out the project and say, okay, it's, you know, the, the engineering cost of this is 2K. And then um, my heuristic for a business is to add 30 or 40% um, to that. So mm -hmm. literally it's another $800 in kind of overhead, billing, marketing, you know, customer contact time that's not engineering time and all that kind of stuff. So, and, also, and also for the way you, I think, go about 
uh, code projects, you also have documentation and archival and whatever else kind of baked in I, as well. I would have I would have put that into the engineering cost. Oh, okay. Um, another structure. I don't know if this works in this in this case, but the other thing is, um, I I ended up like uh, for for decent sized engineering projects, you know, 10K projects or something like that. Um, first hour, first, first 40 minutes is kind of free. Let's talk about your problem and stuff like that. And then I can make a decision. The next 20, you know, next five or 10 minutes is talking about, okay, I'll write you a proposal for, and the proposal is going to cost you $500 or a thousand dollars. And it's essentially a, a, a project plan and, you know, the, the architectural, you know, thoughts and stuff like that. You can have that and then and then we can go from there and it's probably going to cost ten thousand dollars or um if it's a five thousand dollar project i'm sorry i can't afford to do that project because it's just too small for me or um if you don't like you know if, if you don't want to spend the ten thousand dollars you can take that five hundred or thousand dollar plan and chop it around and get kids to do it or you know whatever somebody cheap or whatever so there's an engagement phase and a execution phase that that work differently, and I think that still kind of applies. I, I think you don't want to be selling one one offs, right? What you would really rather do is have somebody who engages you for five sessions or something like that, um, and then there's another, you know, that's another cost difference kind of thing. Um, but then you also at in steady state, you probably want to be having. 30% one offs and 70%, you know, continuing things. And, mm -hmm. you know, and the people that say, well, I only want to buy, you know, two, um, it's like, eh, okay, I can fit you in under my, you know, 30% of, of my capacity, but I can't fit you in, you know, in general necessarily. I mean, it'd be great to have retainers doing this as well. So, yes. and sell some hours. Go ahead, Michael. I was going to say, I mean, it is what you really want, not people who pay you for five sessions, but people who sign you to do like two sessions a week for a year, you know, like you're there. Conciliary. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, you get feedback from them and, you know, kind of like, kind of like we all do, you know, our two hours. Tuesday and Wednesday morning for <laughs> for what? Wait, nice what? cycle. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and I think about um, I think about retainers for for me because I have a retail mindset is breakage. Um, a lot of times a retainer you you make a you don't have to pay you don't have to charge quite as much for a retainer because they're not going to end up using all of it every month, kind of right. Um, Wendy, hold on one second. I have to reset my Wi-Fi because it keeps acting junky. So, uh, and I haven't gotten my Wi-Fi hotspot yet. So let me make sure I don't fall off. It'd be fun to go back in time like 30 years and, and have, explain what that meant. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, it's funny. Um, I've, in finding all my boxes of crap, I just sent a message off to a guy here in Portland named Rick Tarosi saying, I hit my old Apple II Plus. How do I how do I help it find its way into a, into a young person who loves technology's hands, so that they can like take it apart, see what these machines are like, and you know boot it back up to the pro fall through to monitor level, learn about like hex and how you know how how that works, and like like it'd be cool. That that's that's a piece of how I figured out how all this stuff works. And then he sent me back three nice uh, responses, so I, I sent some chaser mails. Um, and then I have a I actually have a in, kind of dead in front of me. Uh, I labeled it years ago, a uh, time capsule. And it has a Sony magic link. It has my old um, Palm computer handhelds, the early handhelds. It has a, a, several, multiple laptops. Uh, somewhere in there's a Mac classic with the names inside the case. They're like the first, first, first round of Mac. None of which are worth much of anything, but they're all sentimental to me. So it's like, what do I do with these things? And unfortunately, uh, a friend uh, in Belgium started an Apple chapel. He bought an old little church in a town near Kent, which is where he works, 
Um, and he outfitted it, I can share pictures, uh, with the whole thing inside is uh, full of gear, including almost every version of every Apple product. Um, and it, it's really cool. And then he, he replaced the little, the little rose window that was over the front door, he replaced with an Atari logo, the one that goes like that. Um, so it's, it's, it's really cute. Yeah, Pete, you would, you would love going in. His name is Peter Hinson, and you would love having a conversation with him as well. Sorry for the long detour, Wendy. Yeah, I'm sorry, because my my comments led to totally back on the retainer thing. Which is great. Um, bring us back then. Um, yeah, so my question was, it's kind of a question and kind of a comment is, you know, in this, um, in this arena, I'm kind of used to doing pricing points where you could actually lay out up front, hey, you get a discount if you buy a set of five, you get a discount, right, if you're doing a monthly and so to figure out maybe tops two different ways that you could be on retainer, right? Either a set of 10 or a monthly thing or a, however that makes sense. And then I was thinking about, however, in this sphere of kind of sharing, sharing um, as like offering your, your expertise as a service, does it make sense to maybe bring people in, in that one conversation. And then at the end of that one conversation, talk about retainer, or is it better to present it up front as an option and basically talk about it up front? Would you like one? Would you like 10? You know, so you could do it either way. And I'm just curious what other people think is like, do you get to the end of the first one and then talk about, Hey, I'll give you a discount if this was valuable to you and you want to keep going. I mean, you could do it both. Actually, you could present it on the website so people understand that there are options and you could also um, talk about it at the end if they've only purchased one. I'm, uh, I'm just up, wondering up, up if people front. feel like the website part is, is a turnoff. Uh, upfront, uh, in, in, at the end of the first session, it would, it would seem like a, like a cheesy upsell, I think. So upfront, money back guarantee. So what I want to do, this, is, this ties into a different conversation, which is, the current plan is to use Calendly and Square and a couple other little things to basically prepay. And and, uh, and, and I'll put this, this pros I think is already on the site, which is like, um, sorry for insisting on prepay, but the moment I need to have a, a, a receivables department and start pursuing people for payment and all that kind of stuff, the cost of getting paid goes way the hell up. So for I, me- I wouldn't explain things. Well, well for, for me, like a prepay with a generous refund policy is all you need to say. Like, yes. like you, you, so, so here's how it's going to go. You're going to fill out this tiny form where you just state your, your statement. That gives me a chance to filter. Oops, I know nothing at all about this and won't be good at this. So let's not do it or refine or let's go. And then I send you a link for pick a moment on my calendar and prepay. And you get to prepay and I have a generous, generous refunds policy. And that, that's sort of all I, all I intend to say. But that's, that's the, the waltz I'm thinking through. Yep. Okay. Um, let me uh, let me just. Although go. I, I have to say, there's there's a lot of friction in there. Uh, in terms of people not wanting to prepay. Uh, no, the so, so too, too many dance, too many dance steps. Yeah, anytime I'm going to buy something, if I can't just freaking buy it, then you know it's like okay, I have to come back later when I have time to figure out whether or not I can make it through the dance, right? It could so, be if you're a first timer, please fill out this form. And then anytime you're a repeat the, buyer, I, you just I don't go on the you, calendar. I don't think you, you need or want the check step where it's mm -hmm. like, let me let me check if I'm okay for that. That should just be a refund thing. So you should say, you know, Gary, Gary Mikulski, pick my brain, um, $500, you know, uh, sign up here, like pick a time here, right? And then if... If they, they say, okay, I've, you know, here's my, here's my uh, one or two sentence summary and you go, that's not for me. Just, just give them a refund right down. They should uh, buy it and then you should refund it. You shouldn't talk about like, you shouldn't put the pressure on them. Hey, let's see if you can buy this and it's going to take me 24 hours to figure out whether or not I can get back to you. And it's like, no, just let them buy it. Huh. Anybody else have feelings about this? My, my feeling is, First, my feeling is, oh man, if I have to start processing lots of refunds because people tried and it, and it didn't stick, that's going to be a, a well, problem up here. <laughs> um, yeah, probably not. Um, I wanted it at the beginning when I first started designing this. I was like, hey, you know, click here to pick a moment on the calendar, click here to, to pay. 
And I was like, I, I need a step before this to figure out if there's even a session here for us. That's why I created the small form. Go it's, ahead, Wendy. It's, it's important I'm... to have that step, but it's really important not to put it before checking out. <laughs> Any barrier? Go yeah, ahead, I mean, I like, I like where Pete is going. I think, um, and I think maybe it could, the stickiness that you're feeling, Jerry, that as a consumer, I could see too, could be answered, I think, in the website if you preface where your areas of expertise are, or if we get good at giving a couple examples of the types of topics, which you did, I think we could do more. I think it could, you know, because I definitely didn't even get the impression, having read it, um, like you were, you were saying startups and things like that. So you put in a couple of good questions, but we could expand that to really mm -hmm. help people. So I think we could do more of that. And, and if you were finding that people are coming and then disappointed by not getting what they need, that's a sign that we need to put better mm -hmm. marketing out, not necessarily a sign that you need more checks, you know, mm -hmm. more checks mm -hmm. and balances. So um, that's one way, this definitely one way to go for sure. Yeah. And I would say, depend on your, you know, your, credentials as stated in the site, the way, you know, Wendy and Peter saying, and the network of people who are going to find out about this to bring you, you know, you're not going to get pick Jerry's Bane. Like I, I need to know how to repair my 57 Chevy. You know, what do you mean? You don't have anything in there about that, <laughs> you know, from some stranger, it's probably yeah. not going to happen. I, it, well, you want me to I, I want to keep saying it again, but I'm, I'm not yeah. going to. Um, I, the, the other thing is, if you get um, an oddball request, um, you might say, you know, oh my gosh, I've, I've really wanted to learn about 57 Chevys, you know, um, you write back to the person, you say, hey, tell you what, you've, you've entered an area where I'm not an expert, um, I'm willing to give you a, a big discount. Um, and and still plow through it. I'm I'm good at picking up on the fly. Um, we're going to be doing something where I'm a little bit out of my. Is that okay with you? Um, otherwise, I can give you a total refund. Um, another thing is, you give them a refund. Uh, you know, if you end up in the situation where you certainly wouldn't have picked them, it's a '57 Chevy. You have no care or need need to know about '57 Chevys. Um, you write them back and say, you know, I've I refunded you two hundred your your five hundred dollars. Um, um, and as a, you know, as a, a thank you, I'm sorry, um, let's do a 30, 30 minute session on, you know, on um, pick one of the five topics I'm, you know, I, I can expound on and, you know, I'd be happy to like give you a, a comp, right? Offer something. A half comp. Yeah. The, and, the other other thing is if you end up with random people who like a, a question, um, um, uh, uh, how to, you know, uh, I, I have a burning question about the the ar architecture of decentralized um, web applications, you know, and I need you to help me with this Python um, problem. Um, that's a place where you, you would write back to the person and say, I don't have anything for you. I'm going to refund your money and maybe give you a spiff, but I think maybe you want to talk to my friend Pete you mm -hmm. know, or my friend uh, Stacy or Wendy or Michael or Hank. Um, and, and they'll give you a, a 30% friends and family discount because you've come in through, you know, a, a weird place. And, and just by the way, we all know that the 57 Chevy was the first year that they had differentials so that the <laughs> wheels would track separately so that you can tell from the evidence at the scene Indeed. that the kids are innocent. The youths. The youths. The youths are innocent. Yeah, Your Honor. Why, um, why, maybe I missed the beginning of the conversation, but why do you want to get people to pay in advance and then go through this, this process of having to make refunds? Refunds? Um, partly because I, uh, I do not want to be pursuing people for payment, like, like zero desire. It's, it's costly, it's difficult, and I'm terrible at it. He, he wants to th does that happen a lot? I, I've never. I mean, he, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to generate invoices. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want right. to deal with billing. He right. wants it done. I, I don't. I don't want to have a step after that says, "Thank you so much for the session. Here's your invoice. Oh, please, yeah. please pay okay. with it. Please pay yeah. with net, net thirty or net fifteen, uh, or whatever, and then have them not pay and then pursue." Uh, there's uh, that is that is to me like the death of my business model. Okay. Alas. Which yeah. Which is because a funny I've, way to look I've at never it, had that in in all my working life that people never paid. So, but okay, I, I can. You have been a fortunate man. 
I guess I've, I've had a non-payment I think once. <laughs> um, I've had uh, I've had non-tracking by me, which turned into non-payment because it was like I that just fell off the back of my brain. So oh, yeah. yeah, I have an I have a new phrase. If we were professional, Michael was it um, uh, in in a real business? Um, WWWP. Uh, in a real business, you offer invoicing, not because it's convenient for you, but because it's convenient for the customer. And then you accept a certain amount of breakage. This is another breakage situation. Right. You know, it's like, so then the CFO goes, great, you're sending out lots of invoices, 10% of them didn't, didn't pay, we'll send those, you know, we'll sell those to collections or whatever. It's, you know, I, that's, that's a thing where you make it easy for the customer and you accept some, um, you know, some amount of loss on it and, and it's a cost of doing business. It's not, but, a bad but, thing. but I think that's also a scale issue. And when you're a one person company, there should be little or no expectation. You're going to do that. Well, the, I, I think, I think your solution yeah. is entirely reasonable. Yeah. Um, pay up front, you know, and then, and then it's, we don't have to have this discussion, but it's also, I think, reasonable to, to offer invoicing. And even as a one person business, in the in the the case of in the you know one percent case, it's like, okay, great, I didn't get one invoice, but I got the, uh, these other ones that that were, I was able to close a bunch that I wouldn't have closed if they didn't have that payment option, right? Right, right. So, I I would yeah. add on the invoicing front, having like been a one person shop freelancer as a consultant and experienced, you know, things where. I didn't get paid partially because I didn't get after people who didn't pay me, which I bet is part of your experience that, you know, taking responsibility for like not being on top of that is, is easier. I don't know. It, it's okay. Okay. I, I made the choice not to pursue that. And so I didn't get paid. It cost me money but the whole process was easier for everybody involved mm. and and i could be better about that i'll work on that um and and make it easier for people to pay me after the fact but also because you're coming out of you know um trust um the idea of starting off with i don't trust you as opposed to i do trust you is a big statement of who you are yeah. and and i think that's worth making it's yeah. sort of not i don't trust you it's i'm trying to oh, yeah. i'm trying to lubricate that i'm trying to design a process that's modern and super fast and efficient but, for everybody but their experiences it's it, it their experience of you saying we'll go ahead and you'll pay later however streamlined you make that paying later is i trust you they're yeah. experiencing this trust. Yeah, I, I agree with Michael. Uh, that's that's what it, it says to me. But but even on another level, don't you and your clients need invoices for tax purposes? Uh, their payment through Square is uh, basically a, a receipt, and it will describe the services rendered, and that should work for tax purposes. But how about you? Uh, I'm I'm going to be collecting. Same thing. It's like it's like I'm okay. selling. It's like I'm selling plumbing by the hour. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Stacy. Yeah. As a big online consumer, I don't see any problem with pay, prepaying. I prepay for everything I buy. <laughs> Anything I order on Amazon, I'm prepaying. If I, you know, whatever I want through through the computer, I prepay. But you probably, if you're spending 500, 800 bucks, how would you feel about spending five or eight hundred bucks on something that's got zero reviews? Well, for one, he's uh, what I'm hearing is that well, I'm hearing there's a money back guarantee. That's what I heard you say a couple of times. And, and they're trusting me on the generous refund policy language that that actually is a generous refund policy. That's an act of faith on their part, which I'm happy to like live up to. That's easy. Also, Stacy, I would I would distinguish most of what we buy online is product ordering but you know if you're ordering a service i could ship them a little figurine service. i could ship them a little bobblehead of me then it's a product if if i if i were going you wendy like that if i were going like for um what do you call it uh, like a health session 
over the computer. I have to prepay. I'm 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 just trying to say that if if I enter this business as a hey now I'll send you well, thanks thanks we're done with our session now I'm going to go process and make a video for you and then I'm going to send you an invoice and then I'm going to wait some amount of time for your payables to process it uh, that 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 is a is a huge tale of labor that I'm terrible at hate and and want to avoid it at not all costs because I don't want it to cost the business. And if, and if the hump of, of prepaying is too large, then I've picked the wrong model, but I'm trying to not get in that, that space whatsoever. That, that, is, that is horrible work for me that I, that, that I could offload, I could hire a bookkeeper to do, but not really interested in doing that. And then, I, then I, now, I, go ahead, Wendy. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I think this comes down to, and I think Stacy kind of provides a, a great comparison point to, to think of it this way, is that, you know, it, people are willing to spend money on things they know what they're buying. Right. So that comes back to the marketing. If they know what they're buying, I, I don't, you know, then, then it's, then it doesn't really matter so much whether I'm paying before or after, because I will get what I'm expecting to get. Right. So if, but, but it's a point to note, it's like a red flag to note, right. If you're not getting enough volume and you want more volume, maybe moving to invoices, it's a good idea. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those sticky things for some people that may turn them away and you'll never know that you're turning them away. So if you, right. So it's just, I think it's, I think it's a, a fair point. Agreed. And, and the question started with um, Pete saying, Hey, you have too many steps up front. You shouldn't ask it. And you shouldn't ask in the beginning if what, you know, what's your question and do a little bit of triage. You should just let people pay there. If the prepayment method is the one we're going to go with. Um, makes sense. Let me go back to an earlier question just for a second. Um, I, I'm in, I just want to interject one thing go ahead. on this subject. Um, is there a distinction to be made between your, you know, between invoicing and bookkeeping and whatever and square payment at beginning of session and square payment at end of session or whenever you get to it in the next, you know, couple of weeks, with with some, somebody, you know, just feeling like feeling trusted, and but it's it's the same mechanic mm -hmm. that it is up front. It's just behind, mm -hmm. and and that I I mean I I just went through a transaction, not really analogous, but but just interesting where there was an online follow-up component, which it sounds like there is in your vision of this, um, where, you know, I'm gonna be getting, you're saying like, I'm, I'm the client, I'm doing the session, and then I'm getting follow-up video and maybe something written or something. I know I'm not gonna get that if I stiff you and, and I just had some, um, some artwork scanned and printed, and I'm also, you know, getting the digital file. Um, and the guy didn't ask me to pay up front, and I paid after, but I didn't really expect him to send me the digital file until I'd paid. And so that sort of Great. You know, made it. You know, he trusted me, I trusted him, he got paid, I got my file. Uh, so thanks for introducing the idea that I could do the same simpler payment system, just move it after. That makes, that makes some sense. Um, I, I, and I realized that prepayment is a, is a hump. I totally get that. Um, and it could be that, hey, as soon as, as soon as you've paid, I'll send you the, my summary video. Could be a statement. I'm sort of holding it for ransom, but I don't really want to do that. Um, not sure. Anybody else have strong feelings? It's really interesting how very simple service design gets really complicated really quickly. Because these are all interesting decisions about trust, about mechanics, about time, about uh, all those things. Yeah, and uh, what I hear clearly is the whole payment thing just really, <laughs> for you, is really just takes a lot of the fun out of it. So, 
Well, it, getting that, paid is like really fun. So I'm, that, yeah. that, that's good. And getting prepaid. <laughs> but I mean, is, I mean, is, is delaying, like, delaying ooh, awesome. doing the invoicing and stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So to me, that that provides the answer for the short term, and it's really just acknowledging that it's going to be a stick, may be a sticking point to try right. to move that over as much as possible up front and see how it goes. That's where I would go. So, so I will say that I've evolved a little bit as a human in that I find joy in sending invoices and writing up invoices, and I've gotten pretty good at not letting those lag. I used to be terrible at that. The part I hate now is remembering that something didn't like, like my, I, I don't keep those open loops. I don't have the bookkeepers like tableau in my head where I remember, and I don't check on the books that often that I can tell that there's two payments I need to actually go ping. And I'm terrible at sending them a note that says, Hey, you didn't pay. And then figuring out what to do. Like, like that tail end of it, I can't stand. I'm okay generating an invoice and sending it off to the person that does, that's not a ton of work, especially if it's a, if it's the same invoice over and over again, copy, send, done but I'd love to avoid that step. I was gonna add a wrinkle here too, which is like, should I accept ETH as payment? I think the answer is yes, or other or other cryptocurrencies, don't know. But it would be, it, it would be really interesting if I accepted semi-fungible cryptocurrencies as payment because there's a lot of crypto wealth sloshing around and people don't know what to spend it on. I'd love them to spend it on me. And if I can convert that into USD at some point, that's actually really interesting. And I know that that's backend effort on my part to, to do wallets and exchanges and pay gas fees maybe, but that's interesting. It's not, that's not out of the question for me. Pete, you were about to say. Yeah, actually at least two things. The, 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 the crypto thing, don't accept crypto. Really? Um, None? There's, not there's even, no not reason to. Bitcoin, not anything? Any, any, any crypto billionaire who wants to hire services can pay you in fiat, no problem. Okay. Um, I, I'm, uh, so, I, but I, think, but I feel like I'm tapping into more money that doesn't know where to go in some weird way if you want if you want to tap into that maybe you do um you want to figure out some weird nft thing or your own token or something like that literally oh okay um, uh so do that but don't just say you know i accept eth and and poke that and so on just don't do that um uh a thing that that totally exists and blows my mind still when I think about it. Um, uh, I have a kid who lives overseas and sometimes she gets payments from, from me. So we had to figure out how to do that. And it was a big pain in the arse. Um, but finally, um, there's a great service called TransferWise, um, formerly TransferWise, now Wise. It works great. Um, and um, uh, they have this amazing thing where or essentially free, um, they'll give you, or they'll let you set up a bank account number um, in any number of dozens of countries. Um, and then you can say, I accept, G and I do, personally, I do. I accept GBP in the UK. I accept uh, AUD in Australia. Here's the SWIFT code. Here's the, you know, whatever code that you need in that, in that country, and it just works. It's an Estonian um, company. So uh, it, it's amazing to be able to say around the world, you know, hey, you know, you live in uh, Estonia, I, I can accept payment there. You know, just just here's the here's the bank code. Um, blew me away. It's super cool. It just works. And that means just setting up a TransferWise account and accepting payments there, right? And going into their their dashboard and saying, hey, I want to open a you know bank account number in Australia, and hmm. you know. And there's no done. and there's no and there's no standing fees for each country or anything like that. Or? Um, there's I you know transfer wise fees are really low. Um, you you do end up, um, uh, you end up incurring costs of pulling the money out. Um, so when I take money out in USD, <laughs> um, it you know incurs kind of a standard fee, which is the same as a credit card fee or you know whatever. That's that's the same, but there's no monthly fee for opening a bank. You're just saying it yeah. opens a bank account in some other country. It's it's actually not a bank account. It's, yeah, uh, it's a fake bank account. Right? Okay, it, and it's and I don't know how it works, but it it just works. It, that it makes works. sense. Um, makes so sense. and then I've got I've still got um I I've got a GBP payment you know from last year or something like that. It's still sitting in in my my um, transferwise balance. You just you know here's the different currencies you have balances in are you um and, and you're sending money away through transferwise for my kid i send yeah. the money through transferwise but um you know uh, sending an invoice in in the uk you know i i'm i and they don't know they don't they don't care it just you know yeah. and 
a, another weird thing is that it's it's not in the U.S. It's actually pretty. It's it's clunky and, and weird, but it's not weird in many countries to just get a bank code and then and then you know there's a, a national payment service that just works and mm -hmm. it's not weird. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's kind of standard. We used to have postal payment systems that everybody used, right? Yeah. Um, so small thing before we run out of time, I just wanted to share, this is the value proposition canvas that I did a while ago. This is what the value proposition canvas looks like. Uh, and then I made a list of the kinds of people who, and this, I, I, the, what I was pitching here was speeches. And I've been talked down off of trying to do the speaking circuit because A, the speaking circuit is kind of dead. Hi. I think. that I can possibly do like like if I could be a hit speaker I would I would like love to do that but uh, so here I have CEOs VPs of marketing uh, human resources personal development professional development designers org, org change agents innovation champions boards of directors event producers uh, and then the nice thing about the canvas is that it does the are you selling aspirin or vitamins question nicely and so what I did was I went to each the, each of the each of the segments here, uh, and said, you know, what are their pains? What are their gains? And I very briefly wrote down, you know, CEOs are trying to motivate their company to change, change their company's intent, maybe don't know, invent some new businesses, become more trustworthy. Maybe they're in a trust. Tr Interesting. I can say stuff about all those. And here's sort of uh, gains pains, uh, you know, how, do, how the hell do I differentiate myself from, from all my competition, et cetera. And I did that for each of the numbered uh, categories above. And uh, I'll share a link to this presentation with everybody in case you just want to browse through it. But this was my attempt to figure out um, how, you know, how to pitch myself. But then I'm like, okay, so which one's the priority? Where do I go? Uh, and then on the site, what I put on the homepage, the reason there's this long list that is long, and the reason they're sort of bulleted out is that each you're creating a motion picture, a startup, a movement, a plan to stop Comet from hitting the earth, software, uh, a sci-fi plot, a viral meme. This is meant to elicit <clears throat> lots of different people might pick my brain for lots of different reasons, and I'm really comfortable with that, right? That, that's sort of what this list is, is entirely meant to signal. It's like, hey, there, there's lots of different kinds of things you might come to me with. Uh, which I'd love to handle uh, in different ways. Uh, so, so that uh, value canvas um, is uh, awesome, and and you should keep going. Um, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh, I want you to have a a set of personas um, who are individuals with a name and a little bit of a backstory and why they're buying your product. So here's Audrey. She's a um, she's a product manager at Google. Um, uh, she she likes yoga and uh, and she used to like Peloton and uh, she eats avocado toast. And here's why she's buying it. Literally. So this is what you do in product development, right? But well, I, I, you're doing product development uh, along with market development and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I want to see that not for me, but for you. Um, and, you know, each of those, those big buckets, you turn, it's useful to have them in big buckets, but you also need um, to think about doing sales and stuff, you know, okay, so I'm, so now it's not product managers, it's Audrey, how am I going to sell to Audrey? Mm -hmm. And, you I mean, know, what's, yeah. So, so um, personas and, and detailed descriptions of how, you know, what you're selling to them, why they're buying it, how they're paying for it. Um, one of the really interesting things we learned in uh, software, software product sales is, um, and this, is, this advice is probably five or 10 years out of 10 years out of date, <clears throat> but um, buying a thing like a wiki is is something that you know if you put the price point at hey it's 10k for 100 people in your company um that means that a man individual manager has to go get budget for it and it comes out of a budget um if the individual manager can put it on her credit card and the credit card company credit card limit for her is 800 um you price it at 799 she's bought it 
you know, today rather than hoping to buy it through a purchase chain, you know, in three months. When I started Rex in 2010, I started with a working assumption that many people had a discretionary budget of about 10K. So I priced it 9K. Yep. Turned out my turned out my assumption was out of date. Um, so we yeah. had to work, we had to figure out other other sort of budgetary ways. But there was a time a decade or two ago when people had a discretionary budget. And if you could come in under that, they'd be like, done, here we go. Yep. I totally get that. Um, let me try to remember one more thing. Um, uh, the other thing I want you to do is make a marketing plan. Um, uh, it, it's essentially kind of OKRs. Um, so figure out your, your target market and you've got a pretty good thing with the value thing. Uh, hopefully you'll add the personas, individual personas, but then you need to commit to yourself or you as the product development manager need to commit to the, or maybe the marketing manager need to commit to the, the CFO and the, and the CEO. Um, uh, uh, okay, I want a mix of CEOs and product managers and innovation, you know, innovation specialists and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, you know, over the course of February, <clears throat> I'm going to have, you know, two calls with CEOs, um, four calls with product managers, um, or their minions, uh, whatever, right. Basically come up with a, like literally like, you know, down to the level of, okay, this week is week two in February. Um, uh, I already knocked down one CEO call. I have three more CEO calls to do for the rest of the month. That means I should try to get one done this Tuesday, right? It goes down to the level of here's the marketing efforts I'm going to do in February, right? Um, make a commitment to yourself at the beginning of February, check your check how you did in the end of February and set up the, the commitments for March. Um, agreed. And also there's a bunch of, non dial for dollar stuff that I need to do and can do up front. Um, yeah. Lots of it. So, uh, and I, and I want to do lots of that kind of thing. And marketing plan should include things like, um, yeah. uh, you know, I'm going to fish around with God forbid, Facebook advertising and fish around with Google advertising and, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Well, so marketing I, plan should be everything. Marketing, yeah. right? I need to do a LinkedIn campaign, for example, because LinkedIn yep. is, is very happy hunting grounds for these kinds of things. Yeah. Here's the press uh, releases I, I'm going to write. Here's the, the people who are going to distribute the press releases. Um, uh, when you can afford it, and hopefully it's really soon, um, you should be hiring a virtual assistant to manage some of this, some of the, the crap, right? Mm -hmm. Like maybe you can do invoices, and, and but you can't remember to check up on the invoice. That's a thing that gets assigned to the virtual assistant, right? Um, you know, doing a bunch of calls to PR people or something like that. It's a virtual assistant task. When did you want to jump in? Yeah, sure. So I've just been looking at surveys and questionnaires lately, so it's top of mind. I know you were planning on putting up a form, Jerry, but I was thinking more of like a survey that is geared towards helping people feel like their story is heard. So mm -hmm. it goes right back to what Pete was saying. If you, if you have in mind three or four or five stories, then a quick quiz or poll or survey could be, could be generated from those stories where you're basically listening into what people are wanting and they feel like, oh, they, at the end, the point is for them to feel like this is a perfect match. And so they're, they're pre-qualifying themselves yeah. Um, even though, you know, you would get the same information by just going, Hey, what's your topic? That's all you need, but they need to feel like <laughs> this product is for them and it guides them through that. So just another idea. I like that a lot. And I think my brain has a scarcity of tools to choose from. So my go-to tends to be Google forms because it's so easy. I know how I use it and I can generate questions and it looks reasonably professional. But I think what you're saying is the presentation should be very different so that it it, ha it it has more of a survey kind of guiding thing. And I don't know, I don't know like what to build that in. Type, Type form. form is one, uh -huh. you know? So it's like, if you answer the question, it has logic in it. So if you answer the question this way, then I'm only going to show you this is the next answer, right. right? Like this is the next question. I'm sorry. Right. So it's a little more and it's free. Um, it's it's a lot more friendly. What's that? It's a lot more friendly. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. that was that's one I'm just learning about actually. Which is, I mean, I knew which stuff is like that. Intuitive and weird, but Typeform type form is a lot better than Google Forms. Huh. And I didn't realize it was free. 
or um, has, or has a free free tier or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think a, a a place a direction Wendy is going is the the experience the experience you want people to have should start before the sale. Yeah, I think. So you should be helping them solve their problems. You should be helping them think through things, even you know, even before they decided to purchase. Another thing, but another thing, by the way, is um, people <laughs> tend to have this really um, simple, uh, simple model of purchase decisions. You know, they come to my website, they read my blurb, they go, "Oh wow, I want to buy that," and then they buy it. The way, observationally, the way real purchase decisions happen is I, you know, I run across, you know, I, I Google something, I run across an interesting ad or an interesting website. I look at the materials. I go, huh, that's interesting. I bookmark it. I'm gone for a month. I come back um, and I've seen it, you know, one or two times before somebody mentioned something. Oh yeah, I had that in my bookmark someplace. I go find it, you know, and, and, and so, and I spend a lot of time kicking the tires on something. Why would I buy this? You know, uh, if I, you know, okay, I'm ready to buy it, but um, so I'll pretend to myself that I bought it and then I'm going to wake up tomorrow and see how I felt about buying it yesterday, right? I, the, 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 the purchase process is, is really complicated and you want to continue to make that easy for the person to, to follow their path through it rather than setting up what you think is the ideal purchase process and, and then, you know, they either make it there or they don't. Um. Agreed, and um, we're near the end of our call. But this, the, you just, you all have just opened up a great thing because, uh, and this may sound a little bit sort of cynical, and I don't mean it that way. I just mean it's a sort of brainstorm. But they're redesigning airports. Like, have you guys been in an ATG redesigned airport recently? It's the Airport oh, Technology actually, Group yeah. or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, so Newark has has a lot of ATG. Minneapolis has a lot of ATG. It's a it's a company that basically turns the gates into restaurants and stores. And you and you walk through and you don't ever walk into a store like the hall you're walk you have to cross through to get to your gate is a store and you just walk over pick something up go go by uh, every seat has USB charging uh, plugs uh, a static uh, iPad that you can order with get the weather seat check if your flight's online order food order merch and they just bring everything to your table there's no you don't walk up to any counter or anything like that it's beautiful I actually really like these gates and and let me now marry that up with. I love brainstorming lightly on ideas and, and, and all that kind of stuff. I just don't know how to create an automated with me not present thing that, that's a quiz that'll lead people through, which is a really fun design puzzle. Like that would be really fun to come up with. But people browse my brain and, and part of our conversation in you know, Free Jury's brain or whatever has been like, hey, the brain is too obscure or whatever. But there are people who browse my brain all the time. And, and, and what if I showed up in the aisle next to them going, oh, yeah. And would you like to you know, have this service? That's kind of how I'm thinking about this. Like, can, can there be some light experience of triage of service that makes them feel heard exactly? Um, and I don't know exactly how to manifest that, but that sounds like a fabulous idea. And it sounds completely aligned with what I, you know, how I would, how I would normally work. It, it can also be kind of a, a topic-based thing. So I, I, it would be lovely to solve that problem, problem a question, challenge. Another thing, though, is you could actually offer a fairly basic one, you know, let's explore the concept of trust, you know, and then have a, a type form thing that goes through, you know, a, a little branching thing about trust, you know, and they learn something that they didn't know before that, you know, is easy for you to teach um, by rote, you know, by, by the machine. Uh, so it doesn't have to be exactly their need or yeah. being solved. It's, it can be a you know a demonstration of the of the way that you think and and helping them learn something interesting. So I could create three light type form hiking trails down three different concepts that are interesting and that aren't very long, and that would be good. That would be really useful. Yeah. That makes sense to me, I, and I like that a lot. The the ATG checkout thing. Yeah. The you know you're walking towards your your gate. You pick something up, you keep walking towards your gate, you like swipe it or whatever, and you paid for it. And it, it wasn't like you go check out. It's like the checkout happened as in, in the course of you making your, you know, you making your progress to your flight. It was really sweet. It's amazing. Along with all the amenities at the. Um, terminals, uh, duty free stores. Hold on. Shit. Uh, 
Okay, I can't actually find them. That's really weird. Airport lounges, there we go. OTG, uh, it's, sorry, it's called OTG and I was getting it wrong and here's their link and I'm gonna... Copy, paste. This is the group and here they are in my brain. And, and if you haven't been to an airport that, that uses them, you'll notice them next time. Uh, and it, it, it's just a, it's just a, I think a really smart merchandising path. Not too bad the pandemic probably shattered their business model because no traffic. <clears throat> Although traffic's way back up, right? Aren't, aren't, like, aren't airports getting full really fast? Like shockingly quickly over holidays and stuff? Despite oh, massive everything is despite massive cancellations and everything else. Yeah. Cool. They're full of people whose flights were canceled and had to change their whole lives and stay someplace. Which for... is a way of perpetuating the business model. It's like just cancel enough flights that you fill all the flights. You know, lose a little bit on each sale, but make it up in volume. And even out, even out your volume. Is, yeah. Um, those were a problem just because the staffing for that bump was a problem economically. Cool. One thing I'm curious about, about OTG, this is kind of off the subject, is is it a way to deal with the zone one, zone two, zone three, you know? It doesn't change like, the mean, boarding. It doesn't change mm -hmm. the boarding process. Boarding well, technology. it would be really smart. Think about how much is sold I mean, as, as, a, as a former magazine person, I know what the checkout funnel is. You know, people standing there and having the chance to pick up a piece of candy or a magazine or whatever the things that are sold there is gold. And if the checkout lines were an enjoyable and interesting and transactional place to be, that, that, that would be... So, so, so when, when somebody, when somebody from um, OTG is uh, a pick your brain client, throw, throw them that. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But also you're saying like the boarding, the boarding lanes, the boarding process, not just to check out from buying food or whatever. You mean like getting on the plane? Oh, you so could, the, yeah. the, the zone five people, like if you're in zone five, it's like, okay, I'm going to go get a good spot in the zone five line, right? It's like all of those people should be milling around shopping and yes. OTG, OTG can understand where they are in the airport, right? Um, and they can say, okay, you know, it's time to, to move to this next Carol. You, you need to start shopping for blah, right? Um, and, you know, don't worry. We'll make sure you get to your, your gate on time uh, and in order and stuff like that. But right now, you don't have to be stressing in line. You need to be like buying a candy bar or a magazine or yeah. whatever. Um, one of my first jobs in the world was at Disneyland in the park in Anaheim on the Jungle Cruise, and it was 15-minute rotations. You'd be, you'd be, you'd have a dock side uh, job. You'd be in the boats. You'd come back to the dock. You'd go on break. You'd basically do that all day, except for a half-hour break for lunch, where you got to race across to one of the mess halls. Half an hour is not a lot of time for lunch. Um, anyway. Uh, uh, often your position uh, was managing, taking tickets and managing the lines and saying things over the PA to calm people down in line in, the, in Disney's famous lines before they had any technology. Uh, so you learned a couple of things, most of which I forgot, but that was a fun job. And just to show you how old, how long ago that was, I have no photograph surviving. I took no photograph of me in that job. Never brought a camera to work. The camera wasn't way, wasn't a way to bring it to your position to you know uh, on the dock. Uh, there's no photo. I've, I've got a couple artifacts uh, from back then, but no photo. I've got my name tag and my and in one of the boxes in front of me, I'm going to hopefully find my hat because I rolled it up, I balled it up, and stuck it in my shoe on my way out the door and said, "I threw it in the rivers of the world. I don't have it. Sorry." Anyway, thank you all for your help. I, this is a been super fruitful. I will go learn up on uh, type form and uh, do some market planning, some uh, a market, do a marketing plan and a couple other things. So. Yeah. And let me know if you want help with type form. Thank you very much. Appreciate that, Wendy. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody.